What's going on, everybody? Another episode of the Sit Down, man. Your host, Ernest Jordan. We got a special, special guest today, man. My dog, former four star, top ESPN 300 player, Isaiah Bolden. Welcome to the show, man. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? What's up? Hey, man. I'm just glad to have you all here, man. So, gonna just. Just be yourself today, Zay. Be yourself. The guy. Well, I know. you know, this is this is my second time on the show, so I'm very honored. Very honored. Very <laughs> You're honored. Kind of a veteran. You're kind of a veteran. Yeah. yeah. Gonna get real comfortable. You're gonna get real comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Man, so we'll start with a few questions. George, start us off, man. Man, Zay, you know we go way back, but just in terms, just start off with just a little bit about like you getting into like football, getting into sports in the in the beginning. Like, how'd that start off for you? Obviously, with your with your pops getting. Uh, into the league and like you being yeah. that pops, just talk about this growing up. Like, how did you get get into football? Was it always football? Was it other sports? Uh, it's crazy. Uh, many people know that basketball was my first love. Uh, football, I was just really good at football. Really was my first love. Yeah. Um, started playing football, then started playing basketball. Really at the age of five. Um, I thought I was going to the NBA. Honestly, uh, throughout. A little kid to middle school, and then once I hit high school, I got pretty bigger, and I lost my skills in, in um, basketball, so we took football, but football is only part of my life. Like I said, my dad played in the league, football, my sibling played in the league, hope my son plays in the league, I mean, I mean, league, play football, but, you know, stuff like that. So just, just touch on that a little bit. I know, like, growing up, playing Little League in the area, kind of, you was with the LFC Chapel Cowboys, we was with the Wildcats, like, we always, like, used to hear of, like, Zay Bolden and Chase Oliver with the Cowboys and stuff, so, like, and then, obviously, you going to Waitman, going to Chapel, but, like, when was that point where, like, when you actually, like, knew that, like, you had a realistic chance of going to the league? Because everyone, like, I'm a, I ain't gonna lie. Everybody has a dream to play, but I'm not going to Always saying, like, I want to be an NFL player, but then it's, like, that point with, like, high-level athletes where you know, like, Dang, like I can actually do this. Like, when was that point for you? Was it little yeah. league? Was it was it uh middle school? Was um, it yeah. I would say honestly, when I knew I was like, okay, I can really do something big it was probably in high school, because I was still logged into basketball, bro. Like I was like basketball, basketball, basketball. I was pretty good in middle school, and then like I kind of stopped playing in high school and just wasn't clicking for me that football clicked. And then I say like um probably like after my junior year, I'm like, okay, I can do something with this for real for like really, you know. Go to college and make some noise, and that's when I was going through the whole, you know, commitment hey, thing hey, on and off. Hey, tell us, tell us who your favorite player was, basketball player. Tell us who your favorite player was growing up. Growing up was uh, Dwayne Wade. Um, uh, <laughs> right now, yeah, Dwayne Wade, yeah, you know, he's about to go say, <laughs> yeah, but now it's uh, <laughs> now it's Kevin Durant, you know, D would retire, so I'm stick with Kevin Durant. And once Katie's gone, it'll probably be Amani Bates or uh, LaMelo. So those are my guys right there. Yeah, man. young generation for real. Bonnie yeah, Baker. Really, yeah, hey. see, a lot of people don't know about that. So you know real hoopers don't know about it. Bro. I tell you what, another thing people don't know about, man. These are the Wesley Chapel legends right here, man. You know, Wildcats, Wiregrass. You know, I was a little little guy out there. I watched y'all play. Y'all had a yeah. senior year, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all went back and forth. Played, yeah, them boys, them boys beat us my senior, yeah, senior year, fourteen, oh, maybe fourteen seven. It was we dog fight, bro. Talk about yeah. how he over here with us, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole nother story about man, how yeah, to play yeah, we wasn't supposed to play together, man. It, it, it's, they didn't yeah. want the real greatness to happen. That would have been scary for real. We wouldn't want state for sure. Like, I already knew we wanted state. Absolutely. Yeah, man, you, they yeah. didn't want to be great. That's man, a trap. I, I, that always bothers me. Really, I was supposed to be at Wiregrass, man. Nah, that sucks how it worked out though, because you know both of y'all was playing QB in the Wildcat. Does they actually was playing legit quarterback up for Wesley Chapel too? Like he was like, yeah, I was. <laughs> I was playing everything, bro. I, I felt like LeBron James in the, in, for the Cleveland Cavaliers against the Spurs, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, that's, that's crazy. So looking back at it, everything, obviously happened for a reason for you. But like looking back, like. What you think was like that earliest moment or earliest memory that really made you fall in love with the game? Because like, as you know, oh. league now being in college, it's people that like they don't love the game; they do it because they're good at it. So like, what was yeah. that? Like, Facts. Really I think I think with? when I won my first Super Bowl in Little League, okay, that was such a good moment for me. Like, yeah. it was that whole day was just a great day, and I was just kind of like turned hit the switch. Me, like I really love you know. 
doing this for real, you know? All right. I'm a, I, this is a question for Aaron and for you, Zip. I know my, like, introduction to the game of football, because, like, my dad was a football player like that. Like, my dad wasn't in the league or anything like that. But, like, uh-huh. I introduced to loving the game from playing, like, NCAA 06, like, the old Madden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, like, into the game, like, like, knowing the game, knowing coverages and stuff, like, I know you're a gamer. Just how much the gaming, like, did that play any part into, like, you your love? Yeah, man. Gaming, gaming's always been part of me. I do big gaming since I was a toddler. You know what I'm saying? I just love, I love video games. I do it all day. Um, playing at NCAO 06, you know, and on and on, like, it, it was definitely a big part of it. And just creating a player and just, you know, imagine myself in the game. You know, I'm so upset I wasn't in NCAA. I wasn't a dream of mine. End up being Madden, but it still don't hit like NCAA. Yeah, it don't. Um, it don't. Yeah, it don't. Hey, it don't. And you might be all time Jackson State. I don't know, man. You may, maybe maybe they put you on the roster. I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> shoot, but nah, bro. Like it's just playing in that NCAA. You just wanted just to be on that game growing up and just playing video games. Period. It's kind of wants me to love. It. You just love it more. I don't know what it is. You just it's a, it's a feeling you have that you just fall in love with something. It's just so pure. Yeah, that leads to my, my next question. Talk about your college days, man. Let's talk about your journey, Zay. Let's talk about your journey. Let's talk about your journey. You start right. so, like your, your journey, like especially like growing up, like in that time, like how like we were supposed to be the dudes like coming up together, and like yeah. you was man, had to go to Jacksonville, back to Tampa. Yeah. Talk about like your journey and like that process, and ultimately yeah. leading up to the decision. Yeah, how that like you know shaped you, <laughs> bro. I would say like. This the whole journey was crazy. Like I legit felt like I was a free agent in high school after every season. Like, uh, <laughs> I swear to God, like I went to Waitman. No, I went to Benito in middle school, and then went to Waitman. So then during that, I'm thinking, okay, we, I'm about to go to Wiregrass. Then I up and moved to Jacksonville for a year or two. Then I thought like Jacksonville, I was gonna transfer to another school in Jacksonville. Didn't end up going there. Tried to get a Wiregrass. Didn't end up going there. So then we went to Chapel for a year. You know how that went. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then a year after that, supposed to go to IMG. Legit was enrolling everything, going to IMG and everything. And then uh, turned back around with the chapel and try to get back to Wiregrass again and uh, just end up staying in the chapel. So that, all that pivotal moving around stuff played, pretty much played a lot. I mean, you could tell my, you know, my recruitment, shoot, when I um first committed to Florida State, then silently committed to USF. Then flip the Oregon and sign a day. <laughs> then sign a day. I, I don't know if I wanted to go to Oregon or Florida State, and then end up picking Florida State. So I mean, it molded me into a, you know a lot of different situations. You know, turned me into a better person. Though I will say that. Like, yeah. In the day of the, all those circumstances, all those issues, just you know, turned me into a better person, and it's a better understanding of life. Period. So I got a question. So, so, like, what was the deciding factor? Like, what was you fighting over between Oregon and Florida State? So, uh, Jordan knows this. Jordan was supposed to be a duck, by the way. People don't know that. Jordan was supposed to be a duck. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I fell in love with Eugene, bro. Like, Oregon was so peaceful and beautiful. Like, you know, I took a visit out there twice. I fell in love with it, bro. Like, I, it was, it was really, like, it was legit a home away from home. It was kind of like my peace, my happiness, for real. Something, it was something new to me, you know, seeing waterfalls, seeing mountains. And all. I'm a Florida boy, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then Florida State, I mean, it's Florida State. That's Tallahassee, man. Shout out to the Rattlers, man. You know, all them boys up there. Yes, sir. Um, and those real Florida boys, you feel me? And that's, that's home, home. So it was kind of like, okay, well, it's more convenient for my family to see me up in Tallahassee than Eugene, you know. So my heart wanted me to go to Eugene, but I went my my head, you know, convenient for my family and decided to go to Florida State. But it was a it was one thing I regret though. It, it probably would be that I should just went with my heart went with Eugene because I I love the school, I love the people. It was everything. It was, it was peaceful. It was a vibe, huh? Oh yeah, it was, it was vibes, bro. It was vibes. Talking about your recruitment story, because like just being honest, like not everyone's as privileged enough to like have the recruiting experience of an ESPN four-star athlete. Just talk a little bit about, like, how was recruiting for you? Because I, I remember vividly, like, being on the mic, on the PlayStation mic at, uh, with you after you got that Oklahoma offer. Like, mm-hmm. oh, up, Ram. Just talk a little bit about, like, that recruiting journey. Because I'm going to be honest, like, 
everyone, it's a blessing to be in that position, but like, it's a lot. It's a lot. And like, to a point where you're like that high profile of an athlete. Yeah, you're getting all these offers, but like sometimes you just want to be a kid. Like all these college coaches, they call on your phone. Like, like yeah. me, be on the mic. Hold on, I got to talk to this coach. Got to talk to this coach. Like, mm-hmm. it's a process. Like, talk about it for you because I know, like, once you went to Jacksonville, like it really started early for you. Yeah. Um, I think the middle of my sophomore year, I got offered by Oklahoma, and that's a big first offer. And that was the year they went to the uh, Ew. college playoffs. Huge so, first offer. Yeah, so OU was my first offer. Shout out to the Sunnis. Um, freaking that that was it. Kind of really set it off, dude. Like then it was like after that it was like every day I was picking up offers, offers, offers. Like by then my sophomore year, bro, I had like thirty some offers. You know what people don't understand is you you it's a target on your back after you get those offers. You gotta you know we're seeing that you gotta be in your A game every every single time because someone trying to embarrass you. You know they think oh I bear some I'm gonna get an offer so. That's another thing. Um, and then just, bro, just picking, just visiting, picking schools, talking to different coaches. You know, everyone hears the same thing pretty much of why they want you to go to their program. It's always the same thing. Oh, we got this. We have that. We see, you know, it's the same thing. But ultimately, it's just, it's, it is a stressful, it is a stressful thing to do because you have to pick one school. You know, I mean, granted, you know, people don't have that many options, but at the end of the day, it's a stressful process because, it has to be somewhere that's molded for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think – and I don't think the transfer portal was like that when I first got into college. You had to sit out of here. Yeah. So you really had to, like, really know where you wanted to go for real. That's another situation that you had to think about, too. It, it, but it was, a, it, was, it was really stressful, bro, and especially, like, picking – like, I know – me, I can remember perfectly, like, when I signed, bro, I did not want to sign that day, like, I was about to call it off last minute. Why? I was, I was going to call it off. I, cause I, I signed early. I was going to, like, I was not call it off early. Yeah, but I had all the media and stuff there, so I was kind of, like, I was overwhelmed and everything. Like, bro, like, I legit didn't know where I wanted to go until, like, the last, last minute. Probably, like, the That's last crazy, 30 minutes. Bro. Yeah, bro, like, I remember um, Clemson had called me the, the – um, no, nah, give us a chance. The, the, what's the name? Oregon was calling me. Um, it was, it was, it was a lot, man. It was, I think it was another school too. Or USF was trying to get me too. And Georgia, Georgia, Georgia was calling me too. So it was like, it was a lot of stuff going on, like telling me to call it off. And I was like, I'm like, bro, like I might call it off. But I mean, that whole situation, it's just, it's just really stressful, you know? Yeah, that sounds like a lot, bro. You know, it's, it yeah. sounds all cool. Yeah. And all, you know, I got all these offers, this, this, and that. But until you got to get to that situation, that time where you have to actually make the decision, bro, all the people, all the family, you know, media, everybody there, it gets serious. Yeah, bro. it's, it's, it's definitely serious. It's, it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of, you know, that goes into it for real, for real. You definitely going to sign your life away when that pen hit that paper, but like, yeah, I, yeah, no cap. I just, in that position, like when you having like these schools like offer you, was did you have any other schools in mind or like what what would be your top schools now that like you went through the process, you in the league, like you've been through college? Because like I'm pretty sure like you went into a program or you went into a place where you're like, oh, this is nothing like recruiting. Like you really have to learn some stuff on your own. But like now going through the whole college process and now being mm-hmm. in the, like, who would your top five schools be now? As a recruit, come doing the whole process over again. Great question. Right. So, funny story. Uh, I'm gonna answer that as a quick answer that too. Funny story in uh-huh. college. I'm in college in high school. I wanted, bro. I wanted that Ohio State offer so bad. Like, I, I wanted the offer so bad. I never ended up getting offered by Ohio State. Um, but I wanted the offer so bad. Like it, it was one of the top offers. And growing up, I was a Florida fan. Then I really didn't, you know, that visit didn't really go as well as I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. But right now, if I was a recruit right now, the schools I would be really interested in top five, or, top five. You know, you know, I gotta go. You know, I gotta put out shout out to Colorado. Okay, gotta, you got five hats. Five, five hats. So, so I'm gonna have Colorado. Mm-hmm. Coach, uh, Coach Prime. You know, yeah, you gotta have Coach Prime in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have Georgia, bro. Kirby, I love Kirby Smart, dude. Great, great okay. coach. I love the hardball Michigan that he offered me. He offered me college. I liked him. Mm-hmm. Michigan. You would have been crazy in their defense. I'm not gonna care. Yeah, I that's yeah, he yeah. I would have yeah. 
Um, this work is tricky because now, because okay. now you know you. I have to, me being me. I have to have something crazy out there. So I'm a, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have two HBCUs, Jackson State and FAMU. Okay. And then I'm gonna throw in. And I'm gonna throw in a wild card, and I'm gonna put in Texas. I'm put in Texas. So I'm gonna oh, six I like that. IL money crazy. Yeah, that NIL. I was just gonna say that NIL money is yeah. crazy. You gotta think of all that too. So I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put in those. It's it was six or like five hats. But I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do six. I'm gonna do six. Okay. Just to, you gotta make your recruitment spicy. You know, what I'm saying that's another thing kids understand. You gotta <laughs> your recruitment gotta be. It gotta be some type of drama. If your recruitment got no type of drama, it ain't really a five recruitment. I mean, it, well, some people be like they want an old school, commit to one school and call it a day. Me, I wanted to make them go. That's kind of lame. That's kind of lame. Yeah, you know, but you know, it's old school. You know, so me, I had to have a little bit of drama and stuff. We'll like spice that. it up a little bit. <laughs> I've never said I've committed two schools at once. <laughs> so, so it's just they it's, different, bro. Yeah. Zay's wild. We was at yeah. Tell this story now. So this is back when Zay was he was in the middle of having his little side and commit to USF. So we had the USF for the state game at USF. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "On God, if USF win, I'm gonna commit after the game. First play of the game, USF." <laughs> Um, touchdown! Get it, bro. Oh, we, everyone looking at Zay like, oh, you about to talk to Coach T after the game for real? <laughs> but that ain't gonna lie. But but, bro, that was lie. crazy. That game was crazy, bro. <laughs> and the thing too about like our recruiting journey, like we really got into it right before NIL blew up. What you think you would have did in NIL in high school? If I if NIL was it was when I, man, look, I'd have made so many different choices, bro. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I'm already knowing. I done been paid, bro. I done got paid. Everywhere. Man. That, uh, they, they had it good, bro. I'm telling you. After after COVID, everything changed, boy. How many official visits did you take? So I went to I went to Eugene. Went to Florida State. You got any crazy then, stories? Crazy stories? It's the craziest recruiting story you had. Um oh, shoot, all right. I'm all right. No, I'm trying to hear. I'm trying to hear. I know Florida State officials, be, Florida State unofficials be crazy. Yeah. Um, Ooh, crazy. How about the nose, baby? <laughs> I, I ain't going to say too much crazy, but, but but you know, everybody know what goes in Baja's, stays in Baja. Yeah, I know, <laughs> hey, I know that's right. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, I'm I'm a little jit, you know what I'm saying, at Bajas and it, I mean the first as soon as I get in there, I see all plethora of types of women. I mean, good God almighty. I mean see, they don't call they don't call Tala nasty for no t- no reason. Now, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I know that's so, right. So so um shoot, man, it was just uh we'll, there's a lot they got this thing called Golden Girls, boy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful women, beautiful. They got they they hosty man. Beautiful women, you know. So you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm 18. So I'm trying to you know shoot my shots. So, you said what? Your host? Who was my DJ Matthews? DJ Matthews, my dog DJ. Yeah, Duval boy. He's my host. Pro Impact, right? Yeah, Pro Impact. You know, we was deep. Well, shoot, we, we was deep. Oh, pro Impact. We ain't gonna talk yeah. about the quarterback, but. Yeah. Um, Man, I know it was Baja's on Friday night, wasn't it? Come on now. It was and then it was Baja's Friday night and they earned you didn't know it, it was club play on Saturday night. So I went Friday night and then Saturday night went out. So yeah, that's new. Yeah, they they, they I mean well, that's old. They 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 took that down when I got there, man. That's gone. Yeah. yeah. Tallahassee left with Zay, man. Tallahassee nah, left. No, for real. Me. It ain't they ain't the same. Shoot. When I first got there, I think right before I got there, I remember I took a visit to the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. So the Coliseum, they, that joint got closed down too. Yeah, was I, ain't, down. ain't none of that up. Ain't none of that up no more. All I think it was Baja's Pops, bro. Base, that's they don't got GBO no more? GBO closed too, bro, my freshman year. It's just an abandoned building, cuz. That's oh, crazy. Hey. You said yeah. what, J Miner? It's just a new Tallahassee, huh? Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. Like, you know, they be telling me on the PlayStation how oh, Tallahassee was this, Tallahassee was that. It was, though, bro. Tallahassee was off the chain, bro. Like, you you really missed it. Like, oh, man. Well, that used to be a different time. Yeah. Damn, you homecoming used to be off the chain. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to get back to that homecoming. But, like, going, about that. going into college, because obviously they, they say 
the biggest transition is the speed of the game. What do you think the biggest transition from high school to college is? And obviously um, college to the league. What do you think the biggest like transition is between those two? So high school to college, the biggest transition, bro, would be uh, people say this, but really you really on your own for real like that. You have to be really responsible. Like you have to watch your film in your own time and stuff like that. Um, what else? What else? What else? You have to do school as well. You have to, you know, they manage you, but you have to be on top of your own stuff. Um, I wouldn't say this. The the speed wasn't wasn't that much to deal with. I think it was more me. It was the physical. Like there were, you know, I was like a buck. I was like one hundred seventy five pounds in high school. Again, to going to college, so I had to gain weight. I mean, everyone's two hundred pounds, pretty much. So I mean, that was going on. I think that's really much what it was. The old X's and O's weren't that hard for me. It mm -hmm. was just more of just the physical. Just you, I'm a, I'm a little freshman going against dudes that's about to go to the NFL. So that's <laughs> that's that, that was the hardest transition uh, for me. Um, from the league, um, it I would say wouldn't it be the 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 speed of the game, but the X's and O's, bro. It's I mean, you people don't understand. It looks so people are so so detailed in the league. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they look at everything. I mean, from practice to game film, it's everything. I think the X and O was the that was the hardest transition for me going into the league from college because the speed to me, <laughs> speed was that well, nothing crazy. It's just just how good these guys are. You going against grown grown dudes who's been in the league for. 10 years, five years, you know, you know, they're not gonna let no rookie just come and take they take their job. You know, they got a family with these. So it's it's a whole whole different environment. So I got a question. And then you gotta stay. And that's the, you gotta stay. Like you really have to like, bro, they looking for your replacement every day. Exactly. Yeah. That's the part of the thing. I earn your keep for sure. Man, so I got a question about that. Uh, like your X's, the X's and O's. So you know, how you see like on Twitter and stuff all the time, like how offensive play calls are like really long and stuff like that. Is it the same way in the NFL play calls? Oh yeah, for for offense, I, I can defense is not that hard. Defense is okay. yeah, but offense, offense, I feel bad for them boys. I mean, them, them calls are long, bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. Especially being outside that corner, like you got the luxury a little. You like. Most of the time, you just hearing to see what coverage is called. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all it is. Type of cat or cash blitz, like when you're blitzing. But most of the time, you hearing that coverage. Offensive side, they they type in essays out there. Mm -hmm. I ain't you got know everything. So yeah, um, transition to the next thing, man. So you know, many of you may not know. So Zay, we spent what two seasons at FSU, right? Yep, shout out to my nose, man. Yeah, two years at FSU, man. Then he went to Jackson State, followed Deion Sanders to Jackson State, where he played his last two two years as well. It was all swag returner. Yeah. Second team ball defense. Well, you know, he's, he's pretty good. Robbed. Right? Uh, well, first of all, the all defense I got robbed. Let's get that. That's the first team. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, was asking, I was doing the research. I'm like, yeah, I was kind of surprised you didn't make the first yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, it, it is I seen the people they picked over you, too. I'm like, okay, well, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to say too much. I mean, yeah. It, it is yeah. what it is. I, want, I just want you to speak on, like, the difference between PWIs and HBCUs, like, like football and just, like, you know, like, life, like, social life and things of that nature. Um... A lot of time I thought it was perfect. It was really good. Like honestly, a lot of people knew I did not want to leave for real. It just it was best for me to leave. Um, and then Jackson was Jackson. Was, you know, I love Jackson. I love the city. Love the people. Difference. The difference, bro. Honestly, is really just the money for real. Like the resources, huh? The resources. Yeah, like. Bro, and then like the schools and everything, like this is more. It's all about resources. Other than that, college is gonna be college. You gonna have your phone regardless with whoever, wherever. You know what I'm saying? It was really just the resources, just the like facilities, the school, everything like that. It just it really just come down to resources, bro. Like if people, if if and then the players, I mean, it's not a big drop off either. It's it's not a it's not a big drop off at all. But yes, yeah, so resources is the main thing. A lot of people, um. Lack it, and if people understood that HBCU get the resources and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be. It's like people don't like realize and go into it like, like the locker, not like the locker rooms. Obviously, like that's like not a necessity. People like the locker rooms mm -hmm. are like the meeting, the the meeting room 
where you got to eat, different little stuff like the gear, making sure like you know, your checks on time, little stuff like that. That you be going into like PWIs, like it's kind of looked at like kind of like a backseat, just because like yeah. these other use like they don't have all the funding, they don't want to for a facility just to make sure that y'all have somewhere nice to eat. Little stuff like yeah. that, like a big difference. But like now experiencing it, like what do you feel is like your biggest takeaway and like why HBCUs don't get as much love? Is it like the money or is it just because like top well, athletes, so, athletes, so like, this is this is my thing, and, and I'm always say this. If athlete for athlete, and I truly mean this, like you know, it, it's not it wasn't a drop off, right? Mm -hmm. So I for if you need a DB receiver corner, I said DB, like you know stuff like that, then yeah, you go get you HBCUs. There's, there's no drop off. Now the quarterback play is is it's not that good in HBCUs. You know, I I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> compared compared to compared. The PWIs. I'm just being honest with you. You know that's real. Um, that's yeah. And then the offensive O linemen, they just they just they lack. You know, they are not that big. You know, compared yeah. to PWIs. But if you come out skill positions, it's about the same. Quarterback plays. It's it's a big. I mean, it's pretty much a big drop off. Yeah, that's the difference in my opinion. That's really the difference. It's really, just a quarterback play, bro. Like. You feel me? I remember like when we were playing, like when I was at Jackson, we, we were legit. You we like. Oh, he can't throw the ball deep at all. So we just gonna sit on everything, like you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. And I feel like at PWI, there's certain quarterbacks you just cannot do that. They're they're actually game changers, you know. So yeah. I think this quarterback plays is the only major difference. Other than that, it, that, as football wise, now outside of football, it's it's a lot of stuff that got to be fixed. But I mean, HBCU is doing anything like investing in you know schools and athletic programs and stuff like that. But you got to win, though. You can't. They're not going to invest. No, no, no. People ain't going to win. Losing, you know yeah, saying? yeah. So I feel like that's another thing. Nah, that's right. And now that, like you mentioned, like the skill level, because like what people say, like they're gonna find you wherever. They really gonna find you wherever. But like, oh, yeah. like on the skill level, and like, because you you've seen it at the high school level, the HBCU level, Power yeah. Five, level, now the NFL level. Who do you feel that has been like your toughest matchup, like leading up to that point? Or like, like a person against a receiver, receiver matchup, or just something. Oh, like it's easy. Um, you just go and put on the put on the uh, Clemson for Florida State game. Uh, we played Trevor Lawrence on the board. I was hoping he was gonna yeah, say Justin. that. I remember you yeah, got, you got Mike told me about Trevor. Hey, Trevor, Ross, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence is huh? You got T Higgins and Justin Ross. Yes, okay. played against both of them. <laughs> Man, and they had Trevor Lawrence and <laughs> and and, and ETN. ETL. Yep. Mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence, man, he dominated for two touchdowns. I, I don't even give up touchdowns, period. He gave me two. Like, Justin Ross was – he was nasty, bro. He was he sleeping. Was oh, Justin Ross People was sleep on – before he got <laughs> neck, bro, he was tough, bro. Like In college, Justin Ross might have been a little bit above T. Higgins. T. Higgins like that. Don't give me us. And that's crazy to think about. Because he was yeah. – and Justin Ross was really like that. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, Justin was cold, bro. Like, he was nasty, right? That's yeah. crazy to say that because, like, T. Higgins is really good in the league. Too. T. Higgins is the truth. <laughs> Justin, and Justin Ross like, was even better than him, bro. Like, Justin was good in college, bro. Like, he was tough. Then, with you, with you leaving from Florida State, obviously, some people consider Florida State DBU. So, you getting a chance to play for Florida State as a DB, like, behind the lines of, like, Jen Ramsey, Duran James, like all the DBs that went to the FSU, then you get a chance to play for Coach Prime at State. Like, what'd you learn the most from him as a corner specifically? As a corner, bro, just really just a. I, so growing up, everyone thought like Coach Prime was the most athletic dude in the world, bro. Like, he was un untouchable. But then, like, bro, he is so smart, bro. Like, Mark. That boy know the game for real, bro. Like he he showed he taught me how to watch film. Like I thought I knew how to watch film till he taught me. This and it's like the techniques, man. It's it's basic fundamentals, but if you repeat it over and over and over again, it's it, you master it. So it's just stuff like that, you know, just little snippets of oh, when he like, if receiver lean this way, he going he you know he breaking out that way, you know stuff like that. You just be quicker. Just if you think quicker than the guy you going against, nine times out of ten, you're gonna be on that rep. And then, you know, he played receiver, too, so he knows all the snippets of that as well. So he was just taught me a lot of stuff. Like, you know, I'm be like, okay, I'll use this. Even stuff I use to the day, it still works. 
Yeah, facts. Because I know, like, probably at this time, like, because you probably have a super good relationship with Coach Prime, so you probably don't even look at it now, but, like, in the beginning, like, were you ever, like, in awe, like, oh, dang, like, Deion Sanders is really my coach. I think, I, I think. If I, like, because going to the office, obviously, like, seeing J James Franklin, how other people be like, oh, it's James Franklin, but, like, it comes to a point where it's like, oh, that's just coach. But, like, right. I ain't going to lie. If it was Deion Sanders, like, oh, like, what? My, so, like, tell me, like, you the person to ever play the position I'm playing. So, like, I would say, like, when I first got on the phone, I was fanned out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was fanned out. When I first got there, uh, I was a little bit like, okay. But after the second link, like, it was like, all right, cool. This is my coach. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't, yeah, yeah. I wasn't that much in awe that more. It's more like, okay, this yeah. is my coach. I see him every day. Like, you know, he cool. Like, you feel me? He's good in our relationship, everything like that. But, like, and then it just, it, it, it's crazy because, like, then it's like, when we go to, we play a game or something like that, so many people are just like, and I, all of them, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, just then it hit me. Oh my god, you know what I'm saying? You take it for granted sometimes, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. he's your coach. A lot of people don't get that experience at, at all. At all, I know, like, most of his life, like, is in the camera, but like, how is he, like, off the field? Because Coach Prime from the crib now, nah. he's yeah, from yeah. the he, what you what you see, what you see on camera, bro, is what you're gonna get, bro. I ain't gonna lie, that's what you see exactly what he is. You don't switch up or switch up for nobody, that's just how he is. So I got a question. He's talking about Coach Prime, man. How do you feel about the like the slander he's been getting? People talking about him, man. He's just for clicks and and likes and things of that nature. How do you feel about that, man? I mean, let's let's. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, people were scared of Coach Prime going to Colorado. Let's just be honest. Um, and then secondly, if you, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't doing nothing. Right. So yeah, pe people people don't you know they don't really, they know what's up you know. In the day, like this, this is the second year. They, I'm pretty sure they make a lot of noise this year, bro. I'm, I'm actually confident they make a lot of noise, um, because now he knows what he has to go get, and he's gonna go get it, and then it's gonna turn to a dynasty. That's what I think should happen. Yeah. So, people. yeah, people just people just scared. You know, they wanted, like I said, they better. He said, "Y'all better give me now when I'm losing, like when I'm down, because when he winning, he gonna be. It, it might get ugly. It's gonna be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. You think he stay at Colorado long term, or you think like the program, like, cause I ain't gonna lie. I was watching the Miami game yesterday. So if Miami mm -hmm. had a bad year, if the ball is out, bro, what do you think Coach Khan would do at Miami, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I think I think I think only he knows that question. And he, you know what I'm saying? And, you yeah. know, and right now, me knowing him, he just focused on the right now. now. He don't he don't look at nothing. He just, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I think only he knows that question when that time comes, you know. He'll I'm pretty sure he'll talk to God if something happens and he'll, he'll get it. Yeah, because there's definitely gonna be some programs calling. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, I mean that's that's attention. You you get you get money, you get attention, and you get the recruits. So it's you get money. business every day. So Zay, like your time at Jackson State, you got to see a lot of people early on. Like obviously Travis Hunter being a generational talent, you got to see him from him day one stepping on campus same mm -hmm. way or like what you see early on with first starting off with Travis just being a freak athlete playing both sides of the ball and what you see early on from Shador which is insane by the way I don't know if people don't understand that playing both sides of the ball is absolutely insane <laughs> even playing one side of the ball like at that level but mm -hmm. doing it on both levels no drop off like I don't even know what he's better at. Cause like seeing obviously people will say corner, but seeing like how like naturally like twitchy he is on offense. And yeah, bro. Field, yeah. And that's like with him not even practicing OD as a route runner. Like if he focused hundred percent as a route runner, like I don't know what he's better in, but like tell me what you've seen early on from him. Travis is extremely gifted. He's really, 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 really smart. He loved the game. And he is on person. He's very humble down to earth. You know stuff like that. You know he's just he's good. Yeah, like he, he's he's legit. Everything he's, he's legit. Uh, Shador, too talented. Just just smart. I mean, just he, great quarterback. He reads the defense as well, and he got that swagger. So he, those two guys are gonna excel at Colorado. Yeah, and what's what's crazy to me is people didn't even think they were gonna be able to translate from Jackson State to Colorado. Like it was gonna be such a big jump for them. That was just kind of crazy to me. Yeah, a lot of people don't know football, clearly. So. A lot, though. 
Yeah. That just go from like not knowing football because like mm-hmm. if you know football and you know what you're looking at and you know like the traits you're looking at in talent, that's why like a lot of these coaches and got a lot of these college coaches, they don't really know how to recruit for real. They yeah. just try to offer you based off of who else offered you rather than trusting right. your cards. So, yeah. You know ball, you gonna you gonna see and you're gonna know talent. So yeah. now they definitely be special for years to come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bet. And then now going into like you just personally having like a lot of things, just you had a big year for 2023, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Just talk about just some of those things from 2023, like uh giving birth to like your first son. Like talk about like what that first means born, to you. man. Yeah, first born, oh, man. that means to you. Congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh it was, it was a lot, man. Being a dad is, is something new to me. I still learn the ropes of it. You know, um, but it's a blessing, though, man. I'm I'm excited. I'm just ready to see what the future holds. Me being a dad, man, it's it's you know it's a lot of learning to do, but it's it's a great it's a great great beautiful thing to see you know, yourself into another you know your mini self. So it's 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 really cool, and I'm 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 looking forward to many 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 more years, and hopefully a, another one in like I don't know maybe a year or two. Oh shoot! See, man, you getting ahead of me. But like, talk about <laughs> like I know like a big thing that like me and Ernest like when we talked about like getting this idea together, like we wanted to ask the questions that like the fans like that they want to hear and fans probably don't think of because like obviously like being a dad in the NFL, like people from the outside looking in, they'll probably be like, oh, they got it so easy, they got all this money, they oh, can give the kids whatever oh. they want. So like, You're- what do you think has been like the hardest part about balancing your career? Because it's not like you like you're um uh, like a four not quite established, already established. Yeah. you're right. not established in the league yet like how hard is that like balancing like you yourself trying to get yourself established like this is something that you've been wanting to do your whole life get your uh get established make your name in the league and all your also goals. making sure your kid is straight right it's it's a lot bro it's it's one thing I learned is a lot a lot of sacrifices a lot of missed holidays a lot of miss First, everything like I'm. Hopefully, I get to see his first steps. It's a lot of you know. You miss a lot of things. You know that's why I feel like mm. learning, learning from the vets. That's why they take the off season so so well because, um, you know they take time with their family to really enjoy. Because when you're in season, you, it's hard to see you see everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to get Christmases, New Year. You know we we working. You know so it's stuff like that. Uh, it's it's a lot of sacrifices you got to make, but. It, It'll pay off in the back end. If you can see the if you see the high road on the back end, then it'll it'll definitely pay off. Yeah, and that's what people like they don't like they don't realize that obviously, like if you break it down to them, but like people get excited. Oh, like we got the Christmas games, we got uh games coming on, on Christmas, we got games we got coming Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving games. But you gotta really think like dang, like these people yeah, real people too. do, like they're not gonna yeah. be with their families for Christmas and Thanksgiving and like things like something you just said that I was like, dang, like, I didn't realize that you're saying, like, oh, I hope I get to see my son's first steps, like, stuff like that. That's like, crazy, it really puts it into perspective that, like, that should be like a norm for parents, to be like, oh, yeah, they're one of their first steps, but like, being in the L, like you said, like, that's work, that's a job, like, yeah, yeah like, a lot of luxuries and a lot of pros that come with it, but like, at the end of the day, like, it's still, you still working, like, this is still how you feed your family, so. Now, I really appreciate you opening up on that because a lot of the average fans, they don't look at it like that. They would look at it like, oh, they got something to watch on Christmas rather than like, nah, these people are away from their families. Right. Entertaining the whole family at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, Entertaining just, all of America, bro. Yeah. So it's all just definitely, it, it, takes, it takes a toll. It takes a toll on you. It does. Nah, 100%. I, I know it, it's definitely a transition handling all that, but. I, I know the way the top pressure you will. I know it's, it's nothing but big things coming for you. Just especially now you making a return back to football. Yes, I know sir. a lot of people know about your injury early on, but just in terms of this, what, what are you looking forward to just the most of time? Man, of I'm just looking forward to be back out there. Once you, I got a little taste of it, I'm like, yeah, I, I really belong in the league. You know, I just felt felt that way. So it's just really just getting back on the field and just playing ball, man. I've been. Mm-hmm. Play ball all year, so it's just it's been a long season just not playing. I just look forward to some play, man. That's that's the main thing. It was definitely a scary moment, but I mean, God had His plan, so I'm here. Yeah, it was scary nah. watching, bro. It was scary watching. 
Yeah, now nah, God definitely got his plans for you. He ain't going to put you in no situation you can't handle. So I know you're going to come back bigger. But just in terms of just going forward, like, you don't have to have the politically correct answers. What's your goals in the league? Like, as Zay Bolden, what are you trying to accomplish in the league? Um, Really just make a name for myself and just plan to, you know, just show I belong and just, you know, stay in the league for a couple years and, and just win, you know. That's in the day I want to – I'm doing these years. I at least want to have something to show for it. One day, yeah. in the Super Bowl. So it's, you know, makes sure, like I said, in the day, just want to make sure I'm established with my family. That's the main priority. Second priority is the win, and third is make a name for myself. So those those three things are my goals. Just how I appeared in, in the league. Okay, hundred percent. I expect I for you. Matter of fact, so who would you say on the Patriots right now is like like your veteran? Like you, you talk to them, ask them. Oh, big time Slater, Matthew Slater, man, that's the goal. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. Special teams go for sure. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. But he's, you know, his dad went to Jack and State, so he's all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, yeah. He's a great dude. His dad's in Hall of Fame too. It's 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 a, it's a great dude, man. Very humble dude. Teaches you a lot of life lessons. That's someone you want to look up to as a man, as a person, as a as a player. That's what's nah. up. And you definitely need those guys, especially going into a system like the Patriot system where, like, if you're not that – if you don't come from, like, a background or, like, that structure, it may rub you the wrong way. So, like, getting, like, a good vet to, like, show you the rope, show you how things go, like, on the field, off the field, that's definitely big to have. So, especially with a big-time guy like him where people think he's a special team's goat, like, the way yeah. he talks about <laughs> him with special teams, so, like – it definitely with you being a big time special teams player, gonna have a lot of kick returns, punt returns, like definitely a good person to have in your corner. So now nah, I appreciate you yeah. sharing. So we're gonna go into a little rapid fire section with the questions that we put together called rapid fire questions with big plays, Zay. Mm -hmm. So all with this is just hey, however you answer it, however you interpret the question, that's just how you oh, go and answer that. that. You ready? Uh, yeah. All right. So the first question is. What's your favorite jersey of all time? This can be like throwback jerseys. Like if you gotta put a jersey on a rock, what's your favorite one to wear? What you putting on? Football, basketball, Ooh. baseball. Any sport. You got one. Any sport. Any sport. Jersey. You gotta go one too. Cause I know you got some fire ones. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I know you got some fire ones. No, I know you do too. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the bro. I, I'm sorry. You gotta go to I go with the, the nah. I'm gonna go with the, the throwback purple jersey Toronto Raptors. Mm. With Vince well, Carter you, and Tracy McGrady. Which one you getting? No, you gotta get Vince. Pete Mac or Vince. Vince. I gotta get. I gotta get. I gotta get Vince. He from. The, he from Florida, man. So yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, both from Florida. Vince. He Mac from Florida. He from Florida. Oh, I'm still going. I'm Vince. I'm still getting Vince. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Vince. Vince, Vince, Vince. Uh, start bench cut. NBA 2K, Madden or NCAA. Start bench cut. You gotta start one. You gotta start. I'm gonna bench, start. I'm gonna start NCAA mm -hmm. bench Madden. I mean, no, no bench. Uh, bench 2K cut Madden. Yeah, I'm cut Madden. I've been cut Madden out my life. That's why you ain't yeah. seen me on the game in a little bit. I cut that thing out. The way that thing is. Hey man, NCAA, NCAA, got got back right NCAA always won. NCAA always won, bro. Madden gotta do better. Bet. NCAA is right around the corner, man. I was gonna say I might have to hop back on the PlayStation when NCAA come out. But yeah. yeah. Next one. If you if you could pick any superpower, what would it be? I'm stuck between reading minds or invis invisibility. I don't know. See, why why you say reading minds? Cause I don't I, I don't know if I would want to be reading people's minds. We they probably talk like crazy, they probably talking crazy. But that's what I'm saying. Like I find like humorous though. Like I I mean knowing what people are thinking. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> or teleport. I mean I teleport. That's that's a teleport. That's oh, definitely. teleport. <laughs> Nah, teleport. That's what, I, yeah. Probably teleport. Honestly, yeah, I probably want to teleport. Teleport it is tough yeah. though. I ain't gonna that's why I ain't gonna care. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. All right, you gotta fill in the blank. I hate when people lie. Now the other side of it, I love when people laugh. <laughs> Fam, you homecoming? <laughs> Fam, you homecoming or Jackson State homecoming? Oh, easy, fam. You. Oh, that's that. That's 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 close, huh? <laughs> that's my right. That was easy. Yeah. All right, we got another start bench. Left. Cut. Co college. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, we got another one. College edition, though. Strictly college edition. All right. Playmaker. Start, bench, cut. You got to answer. Percy Harvin, Tavon Austin, Reggie Bush. Ooh. Ooh. Start, bench, cut. Playmaker. Percy Start. Harvin. Wow. Tavon Austin, Reggie Bush. Some of the greatest ever. This is going to hurt me to say this. I'm going to start Tavon. Okay. Over a person? Oh, it's your uh, list. It's your list. I'm, I'm going to start Tavon. Bro, Tavon, Tavon, you better watch the highlights. Everyone yeah, watch the highlights. highlights. I used to watch the player game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this, is where, this is where it get tricky. Percy, yeah. Reggie Bush. Hey, just college edition. Just college. I know. I know. This, and, and this is why This is why I'm. This is why people going to be crazy because I'm about to really cut a high of trophy winner. I'm a bench here, at Percy, and I'm a cut Reggie Reggie Bush. Percy was crazy though. Percy was a problem, man. He was high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a legend about him. Hey, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. He was a problem. He was. <laughs> Bro, for, for everybody yeah. wanted to be like Tavon, old Tavon man. Back. Oh my god. Everybody right. watch his tape. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Nah, respect, respect that. All right, grass or turf? Oh, uh, grass. What's the favorite your favorite stadium you ever played in, home or away? Favorite stadium home where I was home at would be ain't nothing like dope. Dope when dope rocking that night game too. That night and game when Florida State dope, is man. when Florida State yeah. is like that. A yeah, night that game ain't nothing State. like dope. There's nothing like dope. Yeah. My favorite away yeah. game that I played at. Crazy. So we played uh at Southern when I was at Jackson. That that was a crazy experience. That that yeah. it felt that was that was about the most hostile environment I played in, I think, ever. That was a crazy yeah. At Southern. Dang. Yeah. HBC. Oh, I didn't I didn't expect you to say that. Respect. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, the people of Southern Louisiana, man, they take football real seriously, man. Oh, they, they, they don't they don't play. We got to a brawl after the game. <laughs> oh yeah. And they fans and they fans in the brawl. I remember they was talking crazy too. Yeah. All right. So now, now we got separate ones. So I need your favorite football player of all time, favorite basketball player of all time, and your favorite baseball player of all time. All right. Favorite baseball. Shout out to David Ortiz. Yeah, Big Poppy. Big Poppy. Yes, sir. Um. Favorite basketball. This is gonna hurt me. I'm gonna go with Kevin Durant. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Kevin Durant. I'm gonna go with Kevin Durant. Favorite football player of all time. Man, this is – see, this is where it gets tough because people know I, know I who call – really I, I know people, who you're going to say. Yeah. You're going to say I.E. You're going to yeah, say I.E. See, see, I was going to say Mike Vick. I was going to do it. Hey, hey, I'm going to say Mike Vick, man. I'm going to be my favorite player, bro. That, that man is juicy. Like yeah, that. I'm going to go Mike Vick, man. Mike yeah, Vick. yeah er, I told you that, uh, Vick. Yeah, I knew Vick, you Vick, Vick, Vick was, I mean, he, me personally, he changed the game. Maybe, like, this just. It, he, man, made, he made black kids want to play quarterback. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, that, that, and exactly. that's exactly. Exactly. He, really? All right. I remember, like, when it was a time where, like, black kids didn't even want to play quarterback because it was white position. Mm -hmm. yeah. He changed. He changed. Him, him and um, Allen Iverson, most influential, and Deion Sanders, too. Those three guys are the most influential black athletes, I think, of all time. I agree. It's hard to argue that. Man, you got a point. All right, next question. What's the number one thing on your bucket list? Don't get crazy. <laughs> Don't get crazy. <laughs> no, <please. laughs> oh. The number one thing on my bucket list. I ain't gonna lie, Ern. We coming with the fire, Ern. Bro, I dang, I'm trying to think. I, you say you want to come back to it? You want yeah, come back to that one? Come back to that one. Come back to that one. All right, this one kind of similar. What's one thing you want to do after you retire from the league? Uh, easy. I really be a. I'm gonna be a full time gamer. I actually have like a. We'll have like a some like people to listening, people to like watch me play the game and stream. So you gonna like go? You gonna go on Twitch? Twitch. You gonna go on YouTube? Twitch, kick. I want. I want. That's why I, I really want to get into that when I retire, bro. For real, for real. You can get into it now. Shoot, I, I'm working on it as we speak. What's respect? All right, and then <laughs> the last one before going back to the bucket list question. If I wasn't a football player, I would be. 
<laughs> I was gonna say something uh, crazy. You wild. Oh, come on, you wild. Come on now. You wild, man. You wild. If I wasn't a <laughs> hey, it's your answer. No, come it's your on, answer. Man. It's your hey, answer. I, okay, I would I would probably be a porn star. I knew it. He playing. Pause. Pause. Or or I would probably it. be um Honestly, I'll probably be like a like a, a guy that like I got like I don't know like a coach. I'm always a coach. Yeah, back. Yeah. All right. I'm back, to the thing. I'm back to that last one. Number one thing on your bucket list. Uh, number thing on my bucket list is was one thing you want to do on this earth. I mean, the number one earth. thing: country, travel, skydive. I think on a, I think on I think, a plane, I think, somebody. So so I think. Honestly, bro, it'd probably be like something crazy. I probably want to like, I want to break a, a world record. That's a uh, num- That's uh, that's the good one for bucket list. Yeah, yeah. I want to break a. What you record. think it will be? What you think it will be? I have no idea. No idea. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm the type to look at something very very like easy to do so I can do it. So I mean, the world record. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I want to be break a world record. Shoot. Hey. Okay. We're gonna have to figure out some world records for you to break. But hey, that, that's a wrap. That's a wrap on the rapid fire questions with big plays. Yeah, hey. yeah I definitely answered the rapid either. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, one last thing. Got one last question before we wrap up this episode, man. You know, we know we talk on the mic a lot, Zay. Um one particular, <laughs> one particular person in the in, in the, on the mic says something. I'm not gonna out him, I'm not gonna out him. But he's a light skin. You know who I'm talking about. He said uh, that. He's Drake like, was better than Michael Jackson. How does that make you feel, Zay? I mean, honestly, Drake? that disgusted me. Someone see it. Okay, so I, I'll tell you the story. We're not going to name names. Someone, we were, we were in a PlayStation party talking, and we were talking about top artists, and everyone knows how I love Chris Brown. You know, I feel like Chris Brown is second to Michael Jackson as, a, mm-hmm. as an entertainer. But someone had the audacity to say that Drake was better than Michael Jackson. Drake not even better than Lil Wayne, but if we keep it like, let you finish. Like I was like, wow! Like Michael Jackson, it's it's just like no disrespect to any artist, but Michael Jackson is his own stratosphere. Like, <laughs> like come on, no one's ever gonna like. And I'll tell people this, like, bro, imagine Michael Jackson if he was alive and how he was with the social media we have today. He he can't. He wouldn't be able to go nowhere. Well, he, he couldn't. Bro, go that, like, he couldn't go nowhere. Period. Like, bro, like yeah. imagine he had the social media now, bro. Like that would have. Dude, that would have been a that would. What you think Michael Jackson would have been tweeting though? I don't think the man would ever tweet it, bro. I think I thought like he would have never had a social media, bro. He would have just like. Yeah, Mike could have been the type of dude to post just emoji. He would have had like a five million. It, yeah, he would just post an emoji, and everyone <laughs> would just, you know what I'm saying? Like he would just. Mike was on a diff- it's a different level, bro. bro it's no the same man. Post the emoji is crazy, bro. The same <laughs> man at Super Bowl concert just stood there for five minutes, bro. People just falling out, bro. Didn't even passing pass out. Yeah, passing what? out. Like, Grown men insane. passing out. Grown yeah. men passing out. Seeing Michael Jackson. That's crazy. Yeah. That actually, that if you could have one person follow you back on Instagram, who would it be? That's a good one. I ain't gonna lie. That's that a is good. One. I ain't gonna lie. That's that's a good good one. Oh, that's easy. Coil Ray. Coil Ray. Oh man. Oh, Coil Ray. Coil Ray. Y'all know that's my man. baby. Right there. Hey, I'm a little baby. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, you, you snap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're like that. Hey, 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 hey. I gotta be back on the gram. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, don't know that. hey, man. But let's let's end this right episode up. Thank hey. you all for watching the uh, episode and sit down, man, with my boy Zay. Jay Minor, you know, thanks for watching, man. Like and subscribe. So uh, see y'all next time. Peace.